Hey, welcome to Classic Car Garage, the classic car restoration how-to television show. Well, as you can see, our Project Mustang is back here at Tom's Custom Auto Body in Anaheim, California. It was quite a project getting this back here, but the folks at Peterson Transport came through once again. Well, on today's show, we're going to be showing you how to put a windshield in your project car. And Tom has already begun that process of preparing the windshield for installation in our Project Mustang. First of all, Tom, how are you doing today? Great, yeah. Good to see you. Good seeing you. Now, our windshield shield in our original Mustang here uh, actually was a little bit rough. We took a look at it and found out that it had some rock chips and things in it, so we had to go to re find a replacement windshield, and of course we went to memory lane for that. We called Donna Lee over there, and she found us a windshield out of a 68 Mustang, and the windshield is actually interchangeable with the 68 Cougar, and the Hollander manual tells us that. But this is a pretty good windshield to start with, Tom, but it's just a little dirty around the edges, right? Yep, and this is typically, this is just typical on, on these kind of old windshields. Um, it's been in the car a long time, Mm -hmm. and the rubber has actually adhered itself to the windshield. So now what we have to do is take that rubber off. And we're going to take, uh, take that rubber off using just a simple razor blade like this. And you can find these in most hardware stores. Be sure, though, that you get a box of 100 of these things because you're going to go through quite a few of them, right, Tom? Yes. Um, the reason for that is you want to use these razor blades in a single direction. If you if you use the razor blade and as you're taking off the rubber, the excess rubber that's been on there for a long time, it gets little burrs on the single-edged razor blade. If you go to flip that over, then the burrs are down and they'll scratch the window. So you don't want to do that. You use it in one direction, throw it away. You just want to put a little bit on there. You don't want to put too much in there. A little of this goes a long way. Two, one. Okay, Tom, now that we've got all the weather strip adhesive on there, next step is to put the rubber on. And always a good uh, thing to do is to put on rubber gloves like this <laughs> because this stuff's going to be easier to get off the gloves than it is on your hands. It you sure is. Just throw these things away. Also, you want to make sure that you've got some uh, towels handy like this. We use these big uh, Scott towels, shop towels in a box. And I tell you, this is one thing that we just can't have enough of these things, Tom. Okay, so now that we've put the weather strip in the channel here, it's simply a matter of just uh, running the, the rubber all around the windshield, right? Just to pull back the rubber a little bit and slip it over the windshield. Oh, so. Okay, you take that, give me a hand here, and let's start getting this thing on. All right, Tom, that looks pretty good. All the uh, weather strip is on here now, and not to worry about this along here, right? Because once this adhesive dries, this will come off really quite easily with a simple razor blade, yes, right? Yes, it comes off really easy. Okay, next step is going to be a little trick now, using this piece of rope. That's right. Nylon rope, it's uh, about 3 16 and we start here in the center of the uh, windshield. We're going to leave enough to overhang, so we're going to overlap the uh, rope. You just simply... Uh, Take the uh, rope into the channel and just spread it all the way around. Actually, it goes pretty fast. Okay, Tom, you've got the uh, rope put in the channel here on the weather strip of the windshield, but the big question is why did we do this? What we're going to use this for is when we lay the windshield into the channel, there's a little lip around the um, inside of the car, which is called a pinch weld. Mm -hmm. As we start to pull up on the, the rope, it'll actually expose this channel and lip it overneath the, the pinch weld in there. Okay, now there is a stage that we're going into now with this windshield where the windshield can be broken pretty easily, right? Very easy. That's going to be when we actually push it down into the car. Yes, yeah, so you want to make sure that the pressure that you apply on the outside of the windshield as I'm pulling in mm -hmm. is very um, even. Okay. Nice, even pressure. And it doesn't take much. It doesn't take much pressure at all. The windshield, just as you lift up on the rubber, it falls right into place. It theoretically should. Now I'm going to change my gloves here, give you a hand with this, right. and let's go to the final step. Great. All right, Tom, that ought to do it. Rope is all taped down. Next step is to lay it in the car, right? Yep. Okay, I'll give you a hand with uh, this side. You take that one. You're right. And this is where you want to handle things carefully because this is where it can get a little bit dangerous. Okay, you always want to start with the bottom, obviously, yes. right? So let's set it right down in there. And what we do is we lay the windshield in the hole and we square it to the opening, making sure we're uh, not one way or the other, but as, uh, you know, as, uh, as close to as square as possible. as possible. there. And that looks, looks pretty good. Pretty you got good about there. a half inch on the outside there. Uh, that's exactly what I've got on this okay, side. Okay, that looks really good. 
The windshield looks real good. This urethane isn't going to hurt the paint at all. This is actually made for this, so um, don't worry about the urethane and uh, the glue that uh, it'll come right off. Right. You want to get it off before, uh, you know, it, before it dries on the paint, but it comes right off. Okay, so at this point, now, this is laid in here. Okay, what we're going to do is we just apply, as, as I'm pulling here, um, we're going to pull a little bit, uh, we're going to pull about half the bottom in. Okay, now you're going to come this direction with, yep. your, with your rope, right? Pull this side in. Okay, let me run around this side and help you get that even pressure that you're looking for here on the and windshield. Just take some light pressure, palm pressure here. Right, once again, it's, it's not very heavy at all. No, and you'll feel it just suck right in there. Yep. And what's happening here now is that this molding is now going over the lip that the windshield should sit in. Yep, it's right in there. Um, and now we'll go over to the other side and do the exact same thing. And you can see how the lip is just coming right over the top of the pinch well. On the corners, you rotate the rope a little bit. You can see how nice that's coming in. Rotate the rope so you don't tear the rubber. And just nice, even pressure on the windshield. Use the palm of your hand. OK, Tom, I'll get on the other side now. OK. All He's right. In. That looks good. OK, Tom, so the windshield's in now. It looks like a pretty good fit, but we want to pat this thing down, right? Yeah, and that's what we've got to do. We've got to set the windshield now. Um, what you do is you just, with, a, with your hand, um, fingers together, light pressure, and you just cup the window. And once again, you don't need to ham hand this thing. Just go ahead and give it a nice tap there. And you'll hear your palm pop. Right. You know, it's, you're not hitting this hard. It sounds like I'm hitting this windshield hard, but you're not hitting it hard. But you've got to do this to get this windshield to take a set in there. Okay, Tom is back there cleaning the windshield, and our next step in our windshield installation project is going to be polishing out the glass. Now, what we're going to be doing is taking out any little minor scratches in the glass. If we had deep ones, we would want to replace our windshield, but we don't. They're just little minor things that happen over the course of time. So we're using this Eastwood product. This is called Rodite, and it's a glass polishing system. And what this does is sort of use a mild abrasive to sort of polish out those little nicks or chips that you might have in your windshield. First thing Thing you want to do though is the system comes with this polishing wheel. You want to soak this in about a half inch of cold water there. Let that soak for about five minutes. Okay, the next thing you want to do is mark any little scratches on the inside of your windshield if you're polishing here on the outside using a marker like this. Doesn't make any difference what color it is as long as you can see it. Okay, Tom, let me mark one of the places right there. Right there. Okay, so we've mixed this up at a one-to-one -one ratio until it becomes the consistency of sort of loose gravy here. Now, we've wet our windshield back there. The next step is to apply the uh, rhodite actually to the windshield and to polish out the little scratch that we have there. So we'll just put this right on here, like so. And you want to use this rather sparingly. How are you coming in there, Tom, okay? All right, so there that is. And then you want to take your polishing wheel, like so, and spin this about 600 to uh, 1,500 RPMs. This is a variable speed uh, drill. The maximum RPMs on this is 2,100. So we'll spin it about halfway and just lightly polish. OK, so those little scratches now are pretty much all gone there. Last step, of course, is to simply wipe it all off and your windshield should look as good as new. Well, when we come back here on Classic Car Garage, we're going to continue with the final restoration of our Project Mustang. Don't go away. There's more coming your way next. Welcome back to Classic Car Garage. Well, Tom, our windshield here is looking pretty good, and really, it's going to take about 24 hours for this whole thing to set up, right? Yes. 
Um, you can drive the car now, but you wouldn't want to go out in any, any rain until the 24-hour period where the urethane starts to take a set. Right. Might leak a little bit right now. We wouldn't want to spoil our windshield job by not being a little patient. Yes. Okay, on this part of the show, we're going to show you how to replace your shock absorbers. Now, this is really not something that's terribly difficult or complicated to do. Most home hobbyists, if you have simple mechanical knowledge, can do this. Now, we got our shock absorbers here. These are KYB gas adjust shocks, and we got these from California Mustang. And these are the correct type of shock absorbers for this particular car. So, Tom, I understand, though, that we have some simple disassembly to do here first, right? Yes, we've got to disassemble the bolts underneath, which are these um, studs sticking down. Right. And then we'll use, um, actually, it just takes two sockets, a half inch and a 916 socket. We'll take the top cap off, slide the socket back, or slide the assembly back in, and then uh, attach the uh, shock to the upper cap mount, and it's all done. And we're all done. Really, we've got two nuts down here, we've got another two for four, and we have these three, which makes uh, uh, seven, and that's all there is to it. Yep. Okay, tell you what, I'm gonna hand you this socket, I'll grab one on this side, you do that one, I'll do this one. All right, great. I'm all right, to pull it out. let's lift the old ones out, the moment we've been waiting for. Whoa, take a look at that. Well, these were Monroe's. Yeah, these are not the original shock <laughs> absorbers, but nevertheless, they did serve their purpose. So we'll simply separate the uh, cap from these shock absorbers and then drop in the new ones. And it's really quite simple to put your new gas shocks in. Just simply reverse the process. Start by putting your cap over the shock like this and then just drop it down in there. Welcome back to Classic Car Garage. In this segment, we're going to show you how to evaluate a potential project car. We've come here to Calabasas, to California cars along the Ventura Freeway to evaluate this 56 Bel Air. Now, normally California cars doesn't sell a car that has anything wrong with it. They will recondition it before they sell it, but this car is intended as a restoration project, so it's just perfect for us. Now, the first thing you want to do when you evaluate a project car is to bring along a knowledgeable friend, someone who's an expert in the make and model of car that you're looking at. Even if you've got to pay them, it's better to benefit from their mistakes rather than for you to make a big mistake. Now, second thing you want to do is take a look at the sheet metal of the project car that you're looking at. Most novice restorers don't realize that it's much more expensive to repair sheet metal and body than it is the mechanicals. First thing you want to do is side along the body lines from the front or the back. Just get down and take a look at the straight lines. Take a look at the sheet metal to make sure that there are no wavy uh, pieces in the sheet metal here that might indicate that the car has been in a tremendous accident. Little accident is okay. Also, this might indicate that the frame might be bent. Secondly, you want to take a look at the trim and make sure that it's all there, such as the Bel Air script right here, or this sort of stainless molding, this sort of thing. If all this trim isn't there, you're going to be hard pressed to find some of it, and it can be quite expensive. Okay, now that we know all the trim is there, the next thing you want to do is take a look at the seams on the car to make sure that they're roughly even, such as where the trunk meets the rest of the body. You want to make sure that that's even all the way around. And the doors here, too. As you can see, this is pretty even. That would indicate that this door has really not been tweaked too much. But up here at the front, this big seam here versus a very tight seam here, and this little chip might indicate that we have a problem with this front fender, that it might need to be adjusted. And of course, on the hood here, it's kind of tight here as opposed to up here. So the body panels don't fit perfect, but not to worry. This is a 56, not a 96. Pretty hard to find a brand new 56 Chevy. Next thing you want to do is check for rust or body filler in the car. Now, rust, of course, is quite obvious. You can see that if it's rusted through any place. Right down here, you can see that it looks like it's been repaired. But as far as body filler goes, a simple magnet like this is all you need. Stick it on the car all over. Wherever it sticks, you know that sheet metal. And wherever it doesn't, such as down here, it's going to fall off. That means there's body filler here. Next thing you want to do is check out the interior of your potential project car. Turn on the ignition, make sure that all the electrics work first. Turn on your lights, make sure your heater works, the radio comes to life for you. And while you're in here, make sure that all the interior trim is to the car as well because these can be quite difficult to find. Next thing you want to do is check out the engine. I'm going to start with the radiator here, take your radiator cap off, 
Make sure that the coolant in there is, is clean like this, that there's no rust. This one looks in pretty good shape, actually. Engine compartment of this car is pretty clean. Next thing you want to do is take a look at the uh, oil here. And as you can see, this oil is nice and clean. It's the way it should be. We're not seeing water in this. So obviously, the car was pretty well maintained. Also, while you're in here, too, take a look at your master cylinder. Make sure that there are no leaks in it. You want to take a look at your battery as well, too. And finally, a true indication of how good the car is is to simply start it up and see how it runs. Let me start it up. to run pretty good. All in all, this car checks out pretty well. We took it out for a drive. It drives nice and straight, stops well too, and it's got all the right things wrong with it. Just a few little cosmetic things that are easily fixed, but one telltale sign right down here is this little pan of oil. It's got an oil leak, but that's easily fixed. When we come back on Classic Car Garage, we're going to take a look at some new products. Stay tuned.